coming from Campus Crusade for Christ and having been involved in discipleship for many years, I kind of knew what the materials were like, but I decided to do a full, you know, a new kind of vetting of what's there. Yeah. And what I saw depressed me hmm. because, I mean, every single material I looked at, and I'm not exaggerating, every single one, I'm still asking people to show me something otherwise, assumed something that you can't assume. Hmm. They assume basically that men, in my case, because I only disciple men, but men and women, apply to all believers, are basically on the edge of their chair, and they're waiting for someone to knock on the door and show them, basic, take them by the hand and show them the principles and skills and different things that they need in order to take off. How, do, how, how should I study my Bible? How can I ask really clever, creative questions so that I can engage people with the gospel? Yeah. All really helpful things. But they make the assumption that everyone is kind of ready to go and doesn't have any questions that haunt them. And I think one of the biggest issues that all of us have in one way or another, and we will certainly have at different times in our life to varying degrees, is how do I trust God when inexplicable things happen in my life that go way beyond what I ever imagined as a Christian? I thought my trajectory as a Christian would go this way, yeah. and now it's going this way. Yeah. And all of us have kind of in our minds... You know, if God's good and I can trust him and he's in control of my life, surely it's going to come around. Not happen. You yeah. know, like I used to beg God, God, when our boys were little, don't have our boys get kidnapped and abused by some guy, you know. And that's a fine thing to pray. And, and, mm. and that prayer was answered in the affirmative, I can say. But I would always have, Chris, this kind of sick feeling of going, well, other Christians have prayed that prayer, and it's happened. Yeah, It's just the reality. We don't like to talk about this kind of stuff, no. but that's the reality. So mm-hmm. what do you do when the thing that you never imagined, and you maybe even thought you prayed against, you know, set up some kind of buffer there and some kind of almost pagan yeah. way we think of prayer at times, and then it happens. How do you trust God? And I've seen a lot of people fall off the planet spiritually because something yeah. happened in their life that they thought they'd almost kind of made this quiet pact with God. Usually we don't articulate this. Yeah. See, by me saying it, most people listening there are going, yeah, that, that's really inappropriate that someone would believe that. <laughs> the reality oh, is we're all kind of quietly walking around and have these things kind of, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're marinating on them, we're thinking about them. And they inform the way we look at the Christian life. They inform, like, you know, silly things like when you get a good parking spot and someone says, isn't God good? And it's like, well, God's good if you had no parking spot and you had to run in and be late and embarrassed because you're sweating. God's still good. Mm -hmm. So don't tether God to favorable outcomes. You know, yes, God's good. And and yes, he might have answered that specific prayer for your parking spot. I, I do believe he can do that. But I think when we get too close and meshing those, we get the sense of like God is a genie, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then what happens when God goes silent, the silence of God. And so really what this talk at Wheaton is uh, just a fraction of what I'm writing on now in this yeah. hopefully forthcoming book, God, Great. what on earth are you doing? Yeah. And it uses the uh, prophet Habakkuk and his struggles to understand why God would allow the most dreaded, feared, wicked people of the time, the Babylonians, yeah. to swoop down on God's people and be his instrument of judgment. There's a lot of process there. Yeah. And so we get privy. Habakkuk's unique because usually prophets receive a message and then speak it to the people. This is where... God is revealing something to Habakkuk, and they're having a conversation, and we get to watch in on it.